In the recent years, we have seen how different companies have opted for different service models. Some have opted for games as a service, either through free-to-play titles such as Fortnite or Genshin Impact, but we can also find paid titles such as Final Fantasy XIV. However, lately those services have become very popular, which for a modest amount of money, you can have access from exclusive content and specific titles to a ridiculous amount of games. Perhaps the most successful of all currently would be the Sparks Game Pass, which in addition to giving us access to an absurd library of games, also gives us immediate access to new Microsoft titles. Lately we have seen how several companies are trying to launch their own service of this type, among which is Nintendo. Nintendo is a company that makes both good and bad decisions, even today the decision to put its online game service as a payment method is something very criticized and after the announcement of the expansion these only increased even more but despite this it seems that this decision has generated a lot of profits for the company and because of this it has been seen that they are doing everything possible to improve it in order to attract many more people while at first the service was only limited to give access to retro console games one of the things that has surprised us all is the fact that DLCs of current games have been added to this service. The first of these was the expansion of Animal Crossing, one of the best selling games of the console, and as time went by they have been adding more and more DLCs. The most recent of these is Splatoon 2. And this only shows us one thing, the first one, that they plan to add DLCs that have been released quite some time ago. They don't necessarily have to be recent. The second thing is that this option can be used to promote franchises, which will have a new game coming soon. When I realized this, the first thing that came to my mind were the expansions of Fire Emblem, Three Houses and Xenoblade 2. While with the Fire Emblem expansion there would be no problem, since it is necessary to have the base game to access it, in the case of Xenoblade 2 it is not. Torn of the Golden Country is an expansion that can be purchased separately, and this can make Nintendo think a lot about adding it to Nintendo Switch Online, as this could mean less sales of a game. But what if the result is the opposite? Could it be that this decision could cause more people to play the other games in the series? Could it be that this could increase Xenoblade 3 pre-orders? I'm very optimistic about this, and I would say yes. And one proof of this is Sparks Game Pass. In February 2019, Microsoft announced that thanks to the Game Pass, it had presented an increase of 25% in pre-orders and 10% in franchise sales. But that's not all. Mike Rose, founder of No More Robots, confirmed that thanks to the Game Pass, Descenders, his next game, had presented an unimaginable increase in their pre-orders. But that's not all. Because he also tells us that in comparison, since they are on the Game Pass they sell 5 times more than before, causing sales on Sparks to triple. With this we can see that adding Torn of the Golden Country to the Nintendo Switch Online, maybe it is not such a bad idea, but probably more than some are thinking about, give it as a limited time trial game, just like they did in the past with Monster Hunter, Rise or Don't Starve. But personally I don't think it's the best idea, since Xenoblades are long games, even if the expansion is not, as long as the base game, it still has a high duration. So many people who decide to try it for a limited time, probably won't have time, to enjoy the game in the best way. If this DLC is added to the online service, people will be able to play it at their own pace, with the only concern of renewing the service. Besides, this being a prequel, probably many will be encouraged to buy the base game, to see how the story continues. But not only for that, I think this would be the best time for Nintendo to do this, because of what happened when they released the last Xenoblade 3 trailer. In case you didn't know, with the last Xenoblade 3 trailer, there was a little controversy regarding the combat menu. Those who have played any of the previous games, we already knew what we were going to find in this game. But those who have never played the saga, no, and with those who have never played the saga, I mean the vast majority of players who own a Nintendo Switch, Xenoblade 2 is the best selling game of Monolith with more than 2 million copies, yes, 2 million is not little, but when compared to other games, we see that they are very few, and I'm not saying that this is bad, obviously a Mario Kart will sell more, because it is a game of a genre with a much wider audience, but also, there are many people who are willing to try new experiences, and this is something 
that again this box game pass shows us. So this would be the best opportunity for all those people to try the game, and those who were scared with the combat interface, see that it is not really something very complex to understand, and at the same time, understand why it is so. The latest data given by Nintendo indicates that, there are more than 32 million users subscribed to the service. It is a huge amount of users, that could be encouraged to try the saga. Obviously not 100% will be encouraged to play it, and we do not know how many have paid for the expansion, but even if only 10% are encouraged. The saga could have a considerable increase in sales. Personally I see this as a good opportunity, not only to increase sales of the franchise, but also of RPGs in general. Many people don't get past games like Pokemon, and doing this could open the doors to encourage them to play more games of this genre, and Nintendo Switch has many games of this type, from Shin Megami Tensei 5 to Dragon Quest XI, so I think this could be something that would bring positive results in the long term. Following the logic with the Splatoon 2 DLC, Nintendo could release this month the Fire Emblem DLC in the online expansion, in preparation for the release of Warriors, and if the other month they decide to make a Nintendo Direct, in case they present a new Xenoblade 3 trailer, they could close it by announcing that Torn of the Golden Country will be available on the service, and that it will be playable without the need to have the base game. But well, in the end this is just my opinion. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea to add this expansion to the online service? Leave your opinion in the comments. In case you are new to my channel, my main content is about a game called Dark Knights, but from time to time I like to make videos of this style. That would be all for this video. I hope you liked it. Take care and until the next video.